Hey, what's going on everybody on the interweb? This is Brian here with another video. Um, I'm going to kind of change it up and I'm going to do some uh, radio videos now as well. Um, so this is for the Motorola XTS 5000. This uh, radio is still used by a lot of people today, especially in the ham radio environment. Um, it was really heavily used in public safety. Uh, some people just like it because it's a really heavy and durable, durable radio. Um, so, without ado, I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the cool features of their uh, CPS program, and some of the good, some of the bad, because everything has it, and I don't even know what we need to deal with. Um, I'm going to be uh, looking at it from a ham radio perspective. Um, if there's more questions, we can obviously go into some other areas if we find out a lot of people like this kind of content. Um, so without ado, let me go ahead and get ready to push the button and go over to the computer. You should be joining me on my screen. All right, so first of all, we have to open the program. Um, in order to get your a copy of it, it's fairly easy nowadays to get a copy of it. Uh, these radios have been EOL into life for a little while. Um, as you can see, it's mainly for the handhelds. They do have a few other ones that the software will work for. Um, it was based off of using serial connections. Um, obviously, the power, more powerful the radios have gotten, where they've had to use USB and other ways. Um, some of the features don't work as great, such as the uh, the videos whenever you're using like the tutorials. But thankfully, there's people out on the internet that know, and it's always helpful to just go out in the community and ask. So, tip of the day, kind of nice. Um, I don't have a radio directly connected up to this computer. Um, I, right now I'm on a remote computer doing this video. So I have a uh, code plug here that we'll just look at. Um, in order to actually hook up a radio, if you had it plugged in, you'd read the device, whatever COM port, or if you're using a USB cable, and it would just load the code plug from the radio itself. So let's go ahead and open up a code plug and see what we got. All right, so from here, it looks like it's pretty simple. Um, as far as from a ham radio standpoint, there's not too much we have to do. Um, a lot of people like to know what all, every feature is. There is so much within these radios you can tweak and adjust. Um, we definitely don't have enough time to go over every feature. And But radio information is kind of self-explanatory, the radio information about your radio. One area that I would recommend you to pay attention to, especially if you ever plan on cloning and copying the radios, is your firmware that you're running and your feature set. So what is the radio allowed to do? Like what is it licensed to do basically? Um, you have to make sure that those match. If you're going to try and clone it, it will throw an error at you and then you have to literally go through and recreate this code plug for the other radio, which definitely, if you have one radio, not one or two radios, not bad, but imagine you have a fleet of radios. Do you really want to configure every radio? Not really. Uh, radio configuration. So this is radio wide options, uh, security, kind of self-explanatory what, what the secure is. So it's a digital or that's encryption for it. Um, texting, yet yeah, so it is capable. Uh, phone options. So if you do want to be dialing remote code for whatever reason, you can definitely do that. Um, display options is one area there that we'll typically need to come into. Um, so available items and what's selected. There's two main modes you have. You have a conventional mode and you have trunking mode. Conventional would be your simplex, your repeaters. It would be used for most of your normal use. Trunking obviously is going to be more in depth. Uh, these are P25 trunking radios, so you'd have to be familiar with programming P25 and how that works. Um, typically, that's the only thing you really have to mess with in here is just making sure you have the stuff that you want to be displayed um, on your radio itself, and the size of the font right here is definitely something that kind of can help, too, if you uh, need more screen real estate, you can mess with that. Um, most commonly, You'll, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of this other stuff, but I'll walk you through on actually programming uh, like a frequency in. So let's say you're trying to hit set a, as a repeater. 
or just the simplex. Um, most of this you're not going to mess with. Um, the personalities, that's more for how does the radio handle um, as far as like scan options. So if you have a set scan group that you want to use, if you want to have uh, Motorola tones, if you're doing any of the more in-depth stuff such as like your DTMF setting, encode and decode on your DTMF settings, it's not something you'll typically mess with, but it, just know that those are there. Obviously, the trunking area here is for programming trunks, uh, trunking systems. Typically, it is your P25 trunking system. Uh, as far as setting it up, it it is kind of challenging. Um, it can be done, but it will require a system key. Uh, system keys is their way of ensuring that you can't just connect into somebody else's system at least in the phase two environment. But scanless, kind of explanatory. If you have multiple channels, for example, we only have one zone currently, and we have one channel currently. So if we had it set this way, whatever we apply this scanless to, well, like each, each personality, we would actually put it here. So if we created another personality, channel personality, it would need to be here if we want it to be able to be scanned. So that's your main reason for up in the conventional area for your personalities. You'll create one. Think of them as every time you turn the knob, that's what you'll need is another one of those. So by default, it has three. Um, if you see this line right here, that tells you there's an error. What's nice is it will not let you write to it unless you fix it. So um, where I have it set right now, it does not like that. So I'm going to set this back to unassigned. That's so now it's still an error. You want it to not be in an error state because you cannot write the code plug or save it. Well, I don't know. I think you can save it, actually. But I know you definitely cannot write the radio. Um, the most common area you're in is down here in zone configuration. So for each channel that you created, each one of those personalities that you create. This is where you would actually map it to. Um, you can rename the zone to whatever you want. Um, so, like, um, so you have this as a ham radio zone. We'd come in and add a channel. And so we have channel two, for example. And you can rename this to what you want it to be displayed, whether it's a conventional or a talk group. Um, talk groups are more used for the P25 system what personality you're mapping it to. You, as you've seen, we have multiple personalities. So if we want just to scan for everything, we can put it in there too. Um, a lot of stuff you won't mess with, but if you notice, you do have your receive frequencies and then receive PL tones. Transmit frequency. So this is where you'd set up for your uh, basic repeater. And then the more you scoot over, you'll see your trans, transmit output channel spacing. So if you need to work on your output spacing, um, that this is where you would do that at. And you would configure your PL tone. This is, um, I believe this is an 800 megahertz uh, radio. So I think that th this one's definitely locked down so we can't do as much with it. Yeah, this, if you look at that, it's 851, so that's a, uh, we're up in the public safety band with this radio, so there's not as many uh, frequencies available for use. But this is where you would come in and add what you want. Obviously, if you set it as the, the receive and transmit as the same thing, then you're going to have a simplex frequency. But like I said, this is just a kind of a high-level overview of this program. It's not meant to be in depth. If you have more questions, we can definitely go into it and go into actually a configuration um, of this entire system. Uh, so I guess this is more of intended as a high level overview. So how do I get into the program? How do I get the radio to work? One question that I've gotten asked quite a bit is for channel announcements. So if you've seen right here where it says channel announcements, it says none. Um, in order to enable it, you have to have it enabled for your actual CPS as well. 
So the radio has to support it. So let me close that without saving. Your radio has to support it, but you also have to turn it on your CPS. So channel announcement options. Because by default, it's not enabled. Um, um, so we'll just go ahead and do this for fun. Since we're in a nice lab environment. So open it up. You'd actually have to have it, I think it's those WAV files for the actual. Yeah. So you'd actually have to have WAV files saved. And you can upload those from CPS and you can convert it. So that's kind of helpful using this. So if you come up here into the tool, then this is where you would have a lot of your actual power with this. So if you want to actually add the files itself to your uh, code plug. This is where it has to be done at. Um, there are no voice file, files loaded at this time. But that's where you'd go to turn that on. And that's one of the things that I miss a lot of people like is the, the channel announcements. Definitely it's kind of, kind of nice, especially if you're out in the field and you want it to change it. All right, so if you have any more questions on how this program works, or if you want to go over anything else of, as far as some radio stuff, would definitely be happy to. Do it mind, drop a like, subscribe. Um, appreciate everything. And uh, mainly we're over on the tech side, but hey, sometimes got to come over and talk radio. Thanks everybody for watching, and see you on the next video.